Hey y'all, out here at uh, Griffey's, and he's got a nice little 67 Camaro that he's been working on for a little while. Just got it finished out, uh, actually debuted it at Cabin Fever, and uh, he was so nice to bring it out of the trailer and show it to me. So let me run Larry down and have him tell us a little bit about it. Larry, how are you, brother? Doing good, Scotty. How you doing? Not too bad. Tell me uh, about this hot rod. Well, this is a little 67 Camaro that we built for a gentleman named Greg Grinkle, and uh, kind of did a complete build on it. It's a put all new panels and stuff on it and had it on the rotisserie, did the whole bottom of it and some of gloss black and put stainless steel brake lines and fuel lines and HPC coated exhaust on it. And it's uh, It's got the narrowed control arms on the front and, and uh, all the stuff so we can get it down there nice and low and still drive it. It's very drivable right. where it's at. But, and he plans uh, on driving it. Yeah, this is a, yeah. This is a, you know, a nice driver. Right. He's going to drive it and enjoy it. And, uh, we... Uh, put it back with the um, original 67 Camaro silver on it, but we wanted to do stripes on it. He was real interested in having some striping on it, but yet we didn't want it to be the standard Camaro on this car, Cortez silver, which is the original color. This car would have been done in, in black stripes. Right. Or possibly white, but more than likely they would have all been in black. Right. And it just made such a contrast. So we wanted something that, that was there, but wasn't quite as strong. So we went with a, uh, mixed us up some different colors and tried some different samples and came up with some different things and picked this color out and, and did the stripes in that. No, I really like that. I mean, I like ghost stripes, and this isn't exactly a ghost stripe. It's a little bit darker than that, right. but no, I think that was the right way to go. But, uh, and then but you put new grill and all that stuff. Everything on the car is new. We All the stainless, we used the original, had it straightened and polished, and then replated all the original bumpers. And, of course, new grill and trim rings and went to the more modern headlights in it, the halogen headlights in it. And oh, wow, that's cool. Put the 17s all the way around, but we wanted more of the hot rod look. It's just, he wanted more of the kind of a little bit of a rake and, right. and a little bigger tire on back. Didn't want the O-ring style look. Right. But we went with 17s on the front and 17s on the back, but as you can see, we got a lot beefier. But 17 by 8s on the rear and 17 by 7s on the front. Right. And... Uh, so he didn't want rubber bands on, he wanted right. a higher profile. He, he wanted that, that taller, more, right. you know, more of the hot rod look as opposed to the road pro touring look. You right, know, right. But, uh, put sway bars front and rear on it. and. Uh, so the suspension, is it regular chassis and all that, not an Art Morrison or anything, right? No, no, it's a, it's a regular rollout front clip. Of course, everything we built on it new and rear end went through all the rear end on it, new springs. Did everything back, every piece boat and that morsel on the car is new from front to rear. Wow. And, I mean, he didn't, he didn't spare really, you know, any, any expense in doing it. He wanted it done right, and, and, but he didn't want it to be uh, everything chromed and tricked. Like right. I say, we used brushed stainless fuel lines and brake lines and everything underneath. Uh, HPC coated exhaust, uh, all the floors are done smooth and slick underneath in satin black and we had it on the rotisserie and did that and everything underneath it and then put the front clip back under it. But, um, in the engine compartment we went with a ZZ4, aluminum head ZZ4 and a 350 turbo. Oh that's nice. Yeah. And we smoothed the firewall off on it. and. Uh, did the brake cylinder, master cylinder, and power brake booster to match the silver, but we stayed with the, the more of the traditional looking satin black fender aprons, and, and uh, as you can see, it's got the height, uh, narrowed tubular control arms on it, and the urethane bushings, and, but it's got fact, you know, we put air on it, we put vintage air, in-dash air on it, because this was not an air car. Right. Changed it over and made it an air car. And, uh, Is that call hood work? No, we did not make the cowl hood work. He didn't want the cowl induction system and everything on it. He right. wanted the look of it, but he didn't care about that. He wanted more. He wanted clean the underneath there. He wanted clean under. He didn't want the, right. the big cowl thing right. to cover up all the motor. And You know, we polished the heads and intake and smoothed the block up some on it and went with the front runner system. We put a Ron Davis racing radiator in it and electric fans. And, uh, so this car really, I mean, it's, it's a show car, cruiser, everything. Yeah, you can yeah. show it some, and, and you know, nice cruiser. Right. Uh, you know, we're gonna, we're just got it. Like I say, we took it to Cabin Fever, as you mentioned, and it's the first showing. And I had it finished up, got it back from the upholstery shop. Uh, Steve Holcomb at Pro Auto Interiors did. But a, uh, you know, we went back with an interior that was era as far as that goes. He wanted headrests and all, and he wanted the. Uh, um, 
herringbone style interior in it so we went with 69 seats and then did the interior in you know kept it simple clean right. nice carpeting all new headliner you know everything new in it but we kept it uh, neat and clean he liked the factory steering wheel with the SS emblem in the center and this was actually an SS car originally uh, when he had bought it it had uh, someone had already robbed everything a lot, a lot of the stuff off SS stuff but it was an SS car but we decided to, he wanted the SS emblems front and rear but but liked the C28 stripes better than the SS stripes so you know this we were doing the way he wanted it. Oh yeah yeah and yeah that's, that's, that's always the nice the, the guy paying the bill gets his choice of what he wants done. That's exactly right. And what was I mean did he have a 67 back in the day or what what drew him to He's it? He's had yeah. different cars over the years but uh he just really liked a 67 Camaro yeah. and had wanted one for years and he found this one and and it was a decent car but it had had quarters put in it on you know short quarters put in it and, and we took all that out and put brand new original full quarters in it uh, wheel wells changed the floors it had some pinholes and stuff in the floors and he didn't want to do any patching on that we put all new complete floor system front to rear in it uh, all new glass in it and we put clear glass in it and tinted all of the glass in it so the glass is gray. tinted. The glass is tinted on right. it, but you can't get a gray tint in a Camaro glass. So right. we bought straight clear glass and tinted it in the gray. Cool. To get the look to go with the color. Right. And um, oh, that's sweet. That's a nice car. Yeah, it's a local car, right? Yes, it is. So we might see it out of Clinton Highway or something this oh, summer. Yeah. It should be out there this spring, no problems. Cool. And I guess I talked to him about it to show. I know he's real happy with the car, and I see why. I mean, y'all did an awesome job on we it. We put the factory air uh, vents and everything in it like a 67 would have had, the steel vents right. and everything oh, in yeah. it where it looks like factory air, all the factory stuff in it. It is a vintage air unit, and that's why we were able to get rid of all the junk on the firewall. But, right. But he wanted it to look factory, went back with the... Um, with the uh, deluxe console and stuff in it. That's and, with the gauges there, the clock mm -hmm. and the uh, fuel gauge and yeah, oil, oil pressure, pressure, battery. Right. Cool. That would have been in 67. That would have been an option. Yes, it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's nice. And he went back with some like factory carpet too. You know, right. Like Daytona weave in it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Very cool. Where else is it going to be seen at? Um, it's going to good we guys? May possibly take it down to Nashville. Uh, you know, it, it won't be a type of car you know just have to see how it does we, we might take it down there and show it at the National right. good guys show I, you know, I think no i've good. been a good guys this car will show well at good guys so uh i mean there's a lot of high dollar builds down there don't get me wrong but once you get below these that this is every bit as nice as as any of that other stuff and that's how that spoiler fit back there Mm-hmm. that's a factory spoiler on it factory trunk that's the original trunk yep that's the way they fit on a 67 camaro they got they, these, yeah they got a gap there don't yeah, they that's locating they, things or that's something exactly yeah and that's the way they were and the stripes run we put them back on just like they run but those are all painted stock 67 yeah these are all painted and cleared yeah. over we laid them all on here and if you rub your hand there's no edges he wanted everything smooth and slick that's the way it. to do it yeah and then we put them on like the original camaros were done because we've done some 69 some right. 28 matching number of cars but the stripes stop right here on the spoiler they don't extend onto the Deck lid. trunk lid right, yeah. right there and they don't run all the way and then down. of course we did the inside of the trunk and we, you know like i say we freshened everything new tail lights and all that everything yeah man it's like a brand new 67. oh yeah Trunk all through, yeah. with the original splatter finish. Yeah, that even looks like you know, that looks mats. stock back there on the inside of the infenders too, right? It's not yeah. overdone. It's the same right color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. And it's all got the right color of gray splatter and everything yeah. in it. And then we, you know, we detailed some things up with mounting attachments and button head islands. And, you know, we used a few things to fluff it up. But we, right. you know, did all the underneath sides nice and slick. And, the way he wanted it done, the way we wanted it done. So. Now, is this deck lid, would have this been two pieces and you filled that, or that's the way it was? No, these were, this was stamped this way. Okay. No. Cool. Fortunately, they were. Yeah, now, you yeah. get into 55, 56 Chevrolet, we've right. done a bunch of them in 44s, and where we've had to weld to triangulated pieces because right. they had a cardboard thing between them that showed, and if you didn't want that, you right. had to put carpet in there, or upholstery right. panel, or weld pieces in it. But when they got up into the, probably in the, 
early 60s, late 50s, they started switching those infrastructures around, stamping them out as one piece. Okay. And filling that in. Cool. Are you happy with the way it came out? Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with it, you know, given what, what our goals and what our objectives It was a pretty was. solid car when you got it, outside of putting some rear quarters in it. Um, or am I, am I discounting that? You know, I, I won't... It was like a lot of Camaros. This car at one time had been raced in its lifetime, and and somebody had put short quarters where they put them in through here at one time and just shorted them, and so we cut all those out, put new quarters. We put uh, skinned one door. We put uh, one front new fender on it, both new wheel wells, new core support, new hood. Um, you know, it was it was... An average 67 Camaro. It wasn't an exceptionally good one. He right. thought he was getting, you know, a little better car than he got when he bought it. Right. And then as he tore it down and we got into it, we found that a lot of things had been... So many times that's the case. ...changed around on right. it. And, uh, and so you actually get the paint off and all, you don't know what you got up underneath there. Right. That's exactly right. And I like that. Of course, we updated with disc brakes on the front. We didn't go with this on the rear, but we did go with the discs on the front. I like that chin spoiler too. That's cool. Yeah, I put the chin spoiler on it. The mm. SS emblems. And we went with the billet aluminum hood hinges. Which, Those are uh, nice. One of the Ring Brothers products there. It, it, nice job. They, they yeah, do a yeah. nice job with those. They fit well. and Bolt right up. Yeah. yeah. They bolt right up. And, you know, work nice. We had to do just a little modification because we were running a bigger brake booster. So right. we, had to, we had to shorten one of the mounting stems on the on the back back there but we were running the 11 inch diaphragm and now this looks like these are, these are adjustable yes they are this is a uh, uh, an aftermarket product that uh, that we put on there these are units that originally they boated on solid but this is an adjustable unit uh, is that just for fit and finish yeah and look and detail yeah. they're a little neater and a little cleaner looking and you know got right. the bracketry and stuff on them and right now some of that looks like it's hammer finished underneath there. Yeah, the uh, sway bar is. Yeah. The front and rear sway bars are hammer tone finished. Right. No. And we HPC coated all the exhaust under it and headers and. and uh, so they're not supposed to change color. That's the yeah, that's and they the and they do pretty good. Uh, right. This one's held up so far pretty well, you know. And I mean, if if you can get the engine uh, broke in, actually we had the opportunity on this one we. We cranked it with the headers and ran it, and then got the timing and everything set well. And then we pulled the headers off of it, sent all the exhaust up, and had them HPC coated. So, you know, the biggest problem is you'll you'll cook the, the HPC coating on the headers or you know the ceramic coating on them if you have the timing off. When you first fire a motor, they always running them in. They get hot, and you get a lot of head heat and everything in them, yeah. and get your timing right and your fuel right and everything on it. So, it's pretty easy to. Uh, to mess them up, but we were fortunate on this one. We had the opportunity to start it before we HPC coded them. Because that's, yeah, I just learned that recently because you see pictures of motors on dynos and that stuff is glowing cherry red, but if they're tuned right, they won't do that. Generally not, and, and you know, when you, you know, this has got a hydraulic roller cam in it, as easy for us, there's not a lot of break-in to do, but you still got to seat the rings and you know, you always crank them up, and you pull them up to a couple thousand RPMs and 2,500, and you you know you let them you let them warm up and get hot, and let everything start seating in. And you know, once you've determined you got good oil pressure and all right. that, you you know you run them in, and that run in's hard on the headers if you know you're you're getting your fuel flow and your timing set right. where you need it and all that. And um, it it takes a little bit of uh, time to do that, and if you have the opportunity to do it before you coat the headers, you're a lot better off. Right. But well, we did this one underneath, and you know we kept with the satin black finish under the hood. Did all the fender aprons, and, you know, front frame clip all underneath the floors. You know, no, it's all it, done it, apart. Put it back looks, together. I mean, it looks just very clean. You know, what I'm saying it doesn't look necessarily. Obviously, from the outside, it looks hot rotted, but um, that's just because of the rake. But when you get into the engine compartment, you just cleaned it up in there, and and uh, you know, I mean, it's it's not. Uh, it's not your typical, you know, deal. It's, there's plenty of room. It looks like you can get in there and work on it if you have to. So, yeah, you know, and you uh, used all the heat, heat shrink for the connections. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Went with, uh, we put the front runner system on it. And, um, 
Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, it's a March system, and, and uh, it worked out nice. Right. Got the dual electric fans, and as I say, Ron Davis racing aluminum radiator and electric fan combination. And right. It seems to stay cool good, and uh, cool. everything works well, but uh, and everything fits up and finish on it's pretty good. I wouldn't expect any less. Yeah, you got. I mean, your lines are going to be right. Your stripes line up. Now, Griffey's builds a good hot rod. There's no doubt about that. I'm sure. Well, it'll... thank you. I appreciate that. We yeah. And I, well, and I don't. I mean, I don't say that because you're my buddy. As much as I say that, because I wouldn't be here if you didn't. If you <laughs> if you built crap, we wouldn't be out here shooting videos of it. Because uh, part of it's my reputation. I want to bring the nice stuff to people. You know. Well, that's what we want to do. Is we try to do that with each and every car that we work on. Unfortunately, uh, sometimes that requires a lot of time. Right. And uh, we try not to shortcut stuff. We try to make it go as quick and as efficient as we can, but we're not going to shortcut and hide stuff and, and leave things undone that need to be done. Uh, no, you know, for as... We seem not do it if we have to do it that way. For as many projects as I've seen you do out here, they all... They all command their own time it's not like you're looking forward to one and you're dreading another one every one you're just as proud of you work just as hard on to make sure that the thing's right we, in yeah the we end. try to take the same you know the same attitude whether we're building a real real nice street car you know that's done well or whether we're trying to build one that's an isca show car or whether we're building one that's a riddler car which we've done back in 03 and and, and got a grade eight with it you know my feeling is, you know, a person may have to wait sometimes before we get to their project, but when they when their turn comes, they're going to get the same amount of effort, and time, and, and, and interest put in their vehicle that, that right. the guy before them got. Right, right. And, uh, you know, I think everybody, you know, whether they're trying to build a, a seventy five or a $100,000 car or whether they're trying to build a $350,000 car, you right. know, that's, it does not necessarily dictate how much... Uh, interest you have in yeah. the project doesn't matter how much you that's not going to dictate how much you care about it right because obviously if you're spending a hundred grand you're not going to be doing some of the same things you'd be doing for 300 grand that's exactly right. you know but a lot of that has to do with finishes and you know parts that you're using and things and how like far that you're going to slick and right, molding right. and you know like when you're trying to do something for a riddler car i mean you're just trying to hide and make you know you spend an un, an untold amount of time on a little piece here right trying to hide some fasteners and, and make it where it'll come apart with no fasteners in it you right know, and you spend as much time as it would take to, to do the body work down the whole side of this car on one little piece right know? so right it, it, once you get into those type bills, it gets very disproportional for what you see for the amount of time it that's takes. That's right. Yeah, it's that's very right. Very disproportional. Yeah, yeah. Because people come back and they say, well, I just paid you for two weeks' labor and it doesn't look like you got anything done. You yeah. take them to the bench and show them, well, look, we had these fasteners. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's why we those... We made these pieces right. and all that. And, that. and that's why when we're building these cars and we do it for all our customers, um, even the ones that are here locally, when they get through, they end up with a... With a a CD-ROM of their car, pictures from the beginning through to the end or whatever we've done for them. Right. And um, uh, each time that we invoice them and do the work for them, we, we send them uh, pictures. And a lot of my customers, of course, are out of town from all over the southeast and around the country. And so when we do our invoicing and send them invoices out, uh, we also send them 10, 12, 15 pictures of what we've done. Right. with a summation of what we've done written out and typed out and you know the hours that we spent so because you build these you build build most of these people by the week that's exactly right yeah only a lot of people may not understand that but on friday you send invoices out that's exactly right and, you know, in uh, other words uh a man knows all the time when he's working on you know as we're working on his project he knows what he spent he knows where he's at he knows what's done right and each week he can look at what's done and you know, as, as I tell them when we start on their project, at any point in the project, you know, if, if you're not happy with what we've done this week, we'll take care of that. We'll make you happy. Right. And, you know, we'll park company happy with one another. <laughs> right. You know, you'll, you'll yeah. you know. You always want happy. to give them value and give them their money. Sure. You're not trying to take anybody's head off, but you want them to make sure that they feel like they've gotten their money's worth. And when it comes to these cars, especially if you're not familiar with it, you don't spend a lot of time around it. You don't realize the time and the effort and the hours it takes to get something that would seem simple. That's exactly right. You know, it did. Most it, people that have had a car or two built or partially built or been involved with one 
is very familiar and understands what it takes to do these cars. And some of my best customers over the years are customers that have had cars in shops and um, had them started or had one there and got disgusted and sold the car and then we build a car for them. They're the easiest people in the world. To right. Work for. Once as they've long been as screwed, you're giving right? them yeah. and getting work done for, and they see the work happening and it's the way they want it and it's done the way they want it the first time and you're not backing up doing it two or three times, they're generally very easy people to work with. Right. And let's not forget, if you're if you're building a car like this, you're not trying to you shouldn't be coming in trying to cut corners. You That's know what I'm exactly saying? Right. You gotta have a budget, some idea of where you wanna right. be at the end. But on the other hand, you know, it's well, hard to car, tell. This car is like a lot of cars. This car got more involved than Greg originally thought. Because sure. There was a lot more involved with it. But he never once said, you know, he, he always saw what we were doing and said, no, we, we want to do it. You know, let's let's do it right. Right. And uh, and and he's, you know, I've, had, I've been blessed with a lot of customers over the years that felt that way. And they've let us do them the way that it took to do them and didn't, you know, didn't really give us a lot of problem about that but i think they could see what they were getting for their money yeah but we enjoyed doing this car and this car is a lot of fun this car will be a, a fun car to take out and greg and his wife will enjoy it they'll uh, they'll get to cruise in it this year and enjoy it and it'll draw a lot of attention that's for sure have a good time with it so cool well larry as always buddy you know how much i appreciate you letting me come out here and film these things well you're more than welcome Thanks so did much. You, did you hear it running when we? Did you have it videoing when we were? Yeah, we got it. We got it pulling in, Good. and uh, I'll get it when it pulls out too. Right. So, anyways, there you go, folks. '67 Camaro, Griffey's Hot Rods and Restorations. Hope you all have enjoyed it. See ya.